A guy went in with violent stuff without asking at all first. I consented to sex, but not consented to that. I had a man choke me the first time we had sex because he thought I looked like I wanted it. I asked for a safe word. He said I wouldn't need one. And then he hit me until I cried. I brought a guy back after a night out. He started choking me, and before I could stop him, I passed out. One guy choked me and said, oh look, you're dead now. These are the stories of real women who wanted to share their experience of a time when a sex game went wrong. In the UK over the past 50 years, an estimated 60 women have been killed by men who then went on to claim it was a sex game gone wrong. But where does the boundary fall between kinky sex and assault? A sex game is reference to kinky sexual practices, often known as BDSM. A catch-all phrase describing erotic sexual practices, it stands for bondage and discipline, dominance and submission, and sadomasochism. Here in Soho, you'll find some of London's sex shops, which sell toys using this type of practice, such as strangulation, whipping, and sometimes inflicting pain on your sexual partner. Once considered a taboo, BDSM can now be found in mainstream culture, with films like Fifty Shades of Grey and an increased presence on the high street. So why do people engage in BDSM? And what does it really entail? I met with dominatrix Lady Lorelei, who works with individuals to explore their sexuality through practices like BDSM. There are various different psychological and emotional payoffs for people that wish to experience some form of pain, whether that be psychological pain or physical pain. I, you know, they've been hit and it actually hurts them. One person might want to experience the pain for the endorphin rush that they get, whereas another person, it might purely be a psychological game in their own head. When you feel intense pain, it, you almost can go into a state of calm. Then it's like you can't feel the edges of your body. It's like a, a, an extreme high. What are the kind of pillars of safe practice for BDSM? I think it's seeking overt verbal consent, and it has to be enthusiastic consent. <laughs> so responsible BDSM practice should be safe, sane and consensual, including agreed upon boundaries and safe words. But after speaking to Lady Lorelei, I wanted to know if this was the case for those outside the BDSM community. We surveyed 300 people under 40 and found that 82% had engaged in BDSM, but almost half said they didn't always feel safe. Hannah wanted to share her experience. An older guy that I met on Tinder, he asked me, what are your hard boundaries? And I told him, I don't want to do anything with, with anal. I don't want to do anything with like bodily fluids. He tied me up and um, I was sort of gagged and blindfolded. And then he said, are you sure I can't piss on you? And he said he wanted to get rid of the safe word. Which is obviously quite a bold step in any BDSM book. Yeah, I mean, considering I barely knew this guy as well. Yes. And, but to get rid of the safe word would mean that I wouldn't be able to make a situation end if I was uncomfortable. Sometimes it can be sort of done responsibly. Mm -hmm. But I'd say the culture around it is toxic because the internet, um, Tumblr, Instagram, you've got, you know, accounts which um, post sort of things which, which are supposed to be kind of aspirational, but they're actually really dangerous. But danger in the bedroom is not uncommon, as our survey was supported by research that suggests 38% of women under 40 have experienced unwanted violence during consensual sex. Our survey showed this is not limited to heterosexual relationships, as Emily May told me. She would hit me, she would like, and like emotional as well, she was very cruel. Like as her way of trying to like bring out the dominance in me, I suppose, um, was like, yeah, she would kind of inflict physical harm on me in the hope that it would make me really angry and I would then do that to her. Um, it When actually like I would just cry. So. When you said that you, as a proactive person, did mm -hmm. this research and stuff like that, yeah. where did you go to oh, research? Oh, God, I think, like, I definitely watched a lot of, like, really bad porn. Uh, I think the, like, commercialisation of 
kinky sex and BDSM has like really played a role in the way young people um, perceive those activities and then go on to take part in them. Um, Cause I think it just makes it, it really makes it seem like it's something quite frivolous. Although Emily May's experience wasn't akin to the consensual, safe practice that the BDSM community advocate for, I couldn't help but think maybe she wasn't alone. So the majority of people that answered our survey told us that they first accessed or saw BDSM through porn. The majority also told us that they think more needs to be done to educate people about safe practice and how to engage in BDSM. We did an internet search to see if that was possible and how much educational material is out there. And the first nine out of the ten page one results are all porn websites. So is this mainstreaming of BDSM through media, like porn, contributing to a normalisation of unconsensual practices? We asked Fiona McKenzie, who is campaigning to end the use of the sex game gone wrong defence. Do you find that porn has ever played a part in any of the cases that you've looked at? So I think there's four of the recent cases where the man has watched pornography, violent pornography, uh, either before or after killing the woman, and particularly strangulation pornography. If you go on any of the major porn sites, you will find video after video of women being violently assaulted, being choked into unconsciousness. And if that's what men are watching, perhaps it's little wonder that so many women are now being choked and, and otherwise assaulted. I run a campaign called We Can't Consent to This, which looks to end the use of consent defences to violence against women and girls. In the last five years, there have been 20 women killed, where the man is claiming that she consented to the violence as part of rough sex or sex gone wrong or BDSM. I set this up uh, at the end of 2018 in response to the sentence that was given to the partner of Natalie Connolly. So he was given three years and eight months for manslaughter and he'd left her to die at the home that they shared. Um, he claimed that many of those injuries were caused by rough sex. The 1861 Offences Against the Person Act states that you cannot consent to violence but the success of the sex game gone wrong defence has set a new precedent for shorter sentences and lesser charges. Who, Natalie Connolly's MP, Mark Garnier, is working to see the domestic abuse bill through Parliament, proposed amendments to which include no defence for consent in the course of sadomasochistic encounter. My interest in it is how we can um, then start looking at this sort of so-called Fifty Shades of Grey defence, uh, which was uh, the one used by an individual, John uh, Broadhurst, who, um, who uh, was responsible for the death of my constituent, Natalie Connolly. So it's basically tidying up one of these sort of mitigating defences, you know, kind of, you know, well, she was asking for it, or she provoked me, or whatever. So at what point is it, is it mutual, you know, slightly unusual, sexual activity uh, gone too far? When does it stop being that, and when does it start being actually genuine abuse? You have this type of defence, then it can be abused in itself. So we make it clear that you cannot make that as a defence. It writes it down very specifically in law within the Domestic Abuse Bill. But ultimately that comes down to the courts, judges, barristers, you know, in order to help make sure that the juries are, are given all the facts. But essentially what we are proposing is that you cannot use she or he was asking for it as a, as a defence if somebody dies within the perpetration of these, these extraordinary acts. These games are not as extraordinary as some may think and are being played safely by those in the know. But it's the popularisation of uninformed BDSM practice that's the biggest danger. With thousands of violent pornographic images flooding our screens, changing the law seems much easier than changing the culture.